Good morning, everybody. Um, the Premier told you to be seated, but I'm going to ask you to stand again, please, for the singing of the national anthem to be followed by the territorial song and remain standing for the invocation, which will follow right after. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen, send her victorious Out of the huts of history's pains, our ancestors bled and died. But with strength and with power, they overcame to restore Virgin Island's pride. To preserve the beauty, we devised the plan to obtain ownership of your precious land. Educating your people is the golden key to maintain the success of this territory. Oh, how radiant are your daughters and how wealthy are your sons. Your beaches boast your beauty and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides. They replenish our hopes and pride. Oh, beautiful Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. May God richly bless this territory. May we ask three things of thee. Courage for all great leaders, that they may rule our destiny. We ask for wisdom for our people, that they may live in harmony. And understanding for our children, that they may cherish this legacy. Oh, how radiant are your daughters, and how wealthy are your sons. Your beaches boast your beauty, and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides, they replenish our hopes and pride. Oh, beautiful Virgin Island, your qualities can never be denied. Oh, beautiful Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you for your greatness and your excellence and the bounties that you continue to shower upon us. We praise you for the beautiful land in which we live, for the resources that we have or at our disposal, and for the potential that you have given us to nurture to full fruition. Father God, we thank you for the government of the territories the leaders, the premier, his cabinet, the minister of education, and that team. Father, we pray that you would 
imbue them with righteousness and remind them daily that righteousness builds a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. Father God, we pray that you would continue to give them vision as they seek to lead this territory through tumultuous times. Remind them, Father God, that if this is a nation that stands for you, you will be with us through any storm. We praise you especially for the young people gathered here today and this particular program which is aimed to serve them. Lord, we pray that they too would reach their fullest potential and, and those of us who have policy roles and practice roles to help them along their way would be do so to the best of our ability. We ask you to bless them in their endeavors and bless this entire program, those who would administer it, those who would lead it and continue to give it vision. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus and we all say together, amen. Premier, Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith, OBE. Minister of Education and Culture, Honorable Myron V. Walwin. Honorable Dolores Christopher. Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes. Dr. Dawson, President of the H. Lavity South Community College. Members of the Emerging Fellow Awards Committee. Members of the CARIFTA and CARIFTA team delegation and the BVI Olympic Committee. Other senior public officers, teachers, parents, students, members of the media, good morning. This morning is a very special morning for us in the Ministry of Education and Culture as we formally launch the Emerging Fellows Award. This initiative is the brainchild of the Honorable Myron Walwin as he seeks to find ways to help our youth develop and become the young professionals we need to take this territory forward. The Emerging Fellows Award will allow junior athletes, scholars, and artists the opportunity to travel and participate in training and other activities to enhance their potential to excel in their chosen fields. We have already started late this morning, and I do not want to steal the thunder of the Honorable Premier and the Honorable Minister as they speak to this initiative. So we're going to move right into the program, and I'm going to invite the Honorable Premier to come and give some remarks. Premier? Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Minister of Education, Honorable Minor Walden, athletes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Yesterday evening, as I thought about the Virgin Islands Emerging Fellows Award and what it means for youth or territory in this economy, I said to myself, plant the seed and watch it grow. Or by the head, plant the seed of the tree you want today to guarantee yourself the fruit of your desire tomorrow. And this is what this press conference represents today, my government's commitment toward the development of a future generation of leaders. We are setting the stage and creating opportunities for people today so that we have a better Virgin Islands tomorrow. My government continues to place a significant proportion of the financial resources of this country in education, approximately 18.71% of the 2013 budget. And this is because we know and we understand that an educated population equals a progressive economy. When people are educated, they create, they design, they excel, they grow. They make calculated decisions, and most of all, they innovate. My government is investing heavily in education development because we believe we must ensure that our people can compete on an equal footing with the rest of the world. This is because we know that the rest of the world knows that education enables an active and meaningful participation in the global village. But we must plant that seed today. The Virgin Islands Fellows Award, I have learned, was created by the ministry to prepare young Virgin Islanders for success. And this award opens a window of opportunity for young people to enhance their skills and develop their craft through training, exposure, and mentorship. This annual award targeted Virgin Islanders between the ages of 10 and 20, who show exceptional promise in sports, arts, and academics, 
is an important step in empowering our youth. Participation in programs such as sports camps, academic competitions, immersion programs and art camps will give our young people the opportunity to seek better training as well as expose them to their peers in other regions of the world. The first recipients of this award were Lakeisha Mimi Warner and Jamal Alexander, who had the opportunity to attend the 2012 London Olympics. In fact, Jamal made us proud when he competed in the Games in the 100 meter heats during those Games. And just recently, we celebrated a win with Mimi, who was one of the medalists of our 2013 national team, winning a bronze medal in the 800 meters. So in continuing our quest to create a culture of excellence in our society, whether through academics or sports, my government will continue to embrace the future by making sure that opportunities like the Fellow Award are the fingertips of our youth. We know they want to succeed, and we are doing all we can to meet them halfway. I've said before, we must plant the seed of the tree we want today to guarantee ourselves the fruit of a desire tomorrow. This fellow award is there to recognize the extraordinary promise among, among the young people of this territory. It is there to make dreams come through for parents who want to see their child excel. The award provides the Virgin Islands Committee with a structured avenue for parents and youngsters to seek public funding to support the aspirations of young people. This fellow award is there to effectively help a youth to use their individual talents and abilities to shape their dreams and they in turn will shape the dreams of others. This award is in keeping with government's promise to prepare the young people of this territory to become leaders, leading with purpose, vision, and a spirit of excellence. So in advance, I want to congratulate all successful recipients and the land how I started. As a government, parents, neighbors, and community, we must plant the seed of the tree we want today to guarantee yourself the fruit of your desires tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. And this time I'm going to invite our Minister of Education and Culture, Honorable Myron Walwyn, to come and give his remarks. Honorable Walwyn. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. Honorable Premier, Dr. Deolanda Smith, members of the House of Assembly with us, Honorable Dolores Christopher, Honorable Alvar Maduro Keynes, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Culture, Dr. Marcia Potter, Assistant Secretary, Mrs. Lorna, Ms. Lorna Stevens, coaches, advisors, and leaders of various sports, academics, and arts group in the territory, and particularly the young people of these beautiful Virgin Islands. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It has been 17 months now since Dr. Smith's office, the government has taken office. It has been 17 months since I've had the privilege of serving the people of the Virgin Islands as a minister responsible for education, culture, sports, and youth affairs. Within those 507 days, it has not been one day that I've not asked myself or my staff at the ministry, are we doing enough? for the young people we serve. I came into office with the energy and support of young people across the Virgin Islands. I continue to spend my time with our youth, understanding their issues and concerns, and frankly, remaining optimistic about the future of the Virgin Islands because I see the fire and energy of the Virgin Islands youth. Recognizing the power of young people, Robert Kennedy said, the world demands the qualities of youth, not a time of life, but a state of mind, a temper of the will, a quality of the imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the life of ease. As leaders, we have to ask ourselves, how do we use the energy of our young people to help transform our society? How do we help to prolong the spark of their imagination so that they might accomplish things that we seem content to think that only the bigger islands and countries can do? How do we embolden them to continue to have courage so that one day they can represent us on the world stage? How do we invest in our young people so that they can innovate and help our society maintain relevance? 
how can we empower the future of the Virgin Islands? Using the words of Franklin D. Roosevelt, I want to remind us that we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. With that thought, last April I announced the Emerging Fellows Award to provide a, founding op a funding opportunity to young people in the Virgin Islands between the ages of 10 and a lower limit of 8 and a higher limit of 20 who show exceptional promise to achieving academics, the arts, and sports. I fervently believe that we have Virgin Islanders and belongers in our community that have the potential to make a significant impact, not just on our territory, but on the world. As adults, it is our responsibility to guide that potential and ensure the success of as many young persons as we possibly can. This award will provide them with opportunities to enhance their skills and develop their craft through advanced training, exposure, and mentorship. As the Virgin Islands emerged from an agricultural society some 50 years ago, it was the vision and foresight of leaders such as the late Honorable Laverty Stout and Cyril B. Romney and Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill to invest in our young people and build their minds and skills for the unknown. On the leadership of Honorable Dr. D. Orlando Smith, that is also his government's purpose. That is why after pitching plans for the Emerging Fellows Award, our Premier and Minister of Finance enthusiastically ensured that for 2013, $50,000 was set aside to be used to fund the training needs of our next Emerging Fellows. The award can be used to attend summer camps such as Interlocking Camp for the Arts, where, where we have had past representation by persons such as Kamau Georges and Alton Berti, who have all made local and international contributions with their music. I'm learning from the president of the Volleyball Association, Sabina Mason, that we have a young lady, Sharonda Pickering, who might be able to benefit from a university summer program to help develop her talent. We also have students at our secondary schools with a deep interest in science and technology. If there's a science and innovation camp in Europe or even China, why shouldn't they have the opportunity to participate and refine their ideas? During Easter, we all gathered around our television and computers to watch our junior national athletics team capture eight medals at this year's Carifters Games. Perhaps Nelda Huggins, Kyron McMaster, Eldred Henry, or Tinkerbell Moses should be in Jamaica or the UK undertaking some intensive training this summer. Those are the types of opportunities that I anticipate this award will provide for young people. We have already seen its impact on our first two fellows. Just after this initiative was announced in April 2012, Mimi Warner and Jamal Alexander had the opportunity of a lifetime to attend the 2012 London Olympic Games. To see the excitement in Mimi's eyes when she got to meet the athletes whose running time she chases in her training alerted me of her ambition to one day, one day wear Olympic gold. When I saw Jamal in those starting blocks representing our country, I felt just as proud of him as I'm sure his parents were. What is also significant about Jamal's participation in those games is that as his race was about to start, the Virgin Islands got a 10-second unpaid endorsement by the commentators, talking about our destination as a premier place for vacation. Now, Mr. Premier and Minister of Tourism, with the millions that were watching those games, that piece of free advertising was something that we couldn't pay for. Ladies and gentlemen, that is also the opportunity that we have as a territory when our people take the world stage and that is the residual effect of supporting the dreams and aspirations of our youth. The Emerging Fellow Award will be given annually to, at first, six young persons, two pursuing sporting goals, two pursuing artistic goals, and two pursuing academic goals. The process for application will be competitive. As we are creating a culture of excellence in our education system, we encourage healthy competition among our young people. It is another way to prepare them for the realities of life. To be named a Virgin Islands Emerging Fellow, it means that a young person shows exceptional promise in their field. It should be noted that talent will not be enough to be an Emerging Fellow. We want this investment to be used to help us prepare the future leaders of our beautiful islands to lead with purpose, vision, and a spirit of excellence. Emerging Fellows will have previously shown their commitment not only to their craft, 
but to the Virgin Islands in being good young citizens, showing consistently sportsmanlike behavior, having good grades, and overall healthy attitude to developing their craft and themselves. Emerging Fellows will be by default youth ambassadors of our territory. It is my intention that for the year that a person has been granted the Emerging Fellows Award, I will do my best to expose them to other opportunities in our community, a chance to speak about their experiences, meet persons at all levels, and help to build that young person's total being as we help to invest in their gift. One of the reasons that we have initially limited the award to six persons is that we want this investment to make a significant impact in developing the talents of our fellows. I will be requesting of our Minister of Finance additional funds as we build the award each year. I notice he didn't smile. Give me a clap for that and encourage him, please. I want to thank the members of our community who have stepped forward with enthusiasm to be a part of the Emerging Fellows Selection Committee. We have committee members from a cross section of our community who have had personal and professional success in sports, academics, and the arts. The committee will be chaired by a gentleman that is no stranger to our community and one who has demonstrated his commitment to excellence and developing our young people through music, Mr. Arthur Selwood. Mr. Selwood, stand so they can see who you are. Other members include Rupert Vanterpool Jr. from Virgin Goddard Community, Ruben Vanterpool, a well-known artist, Heather Butcher, our very own exceptional choreographer, Jessica Caldwell from Just Van Dyke Community, Colonel Vanterpool, an acclaimed musician and teacher, Aubrey Levens from the Anigada Community, Secondary School Teacher of the Year, Elisa Todman, Mr. Paul Hewlett representing the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports. I thank you all once again for stepping up and helping us to guide this process. Give the committee members a round of applause. I want to remind coaches, teachers, and young people that the application process will be competitive. We want to get six fellows off to training this summer and will therefore be accepting applications immediately until the end of April. Applications will be disseminated through the Ministry of Education and Culture and can be sent to the program's desk officer, Ms. Lorna Stevens, Assistant Secretary at the Ministry. To the young people of the Virgin Islands, you have an ally in me as your minister, and you have an ally in our premier, and indeed, his entire government. We wake up each day on a mission to help improve your life, and thus the future of the Virgin Islands. We simply require that you participate. Help us understand what you need to succeed. Be attentive in school, be involved in your communities, and as I hope we have demonstrated today, and in all of our initiatives from this government, these past 507 days, we will remain committed to building a better Virgin Islands. We know that we, what we do today will be the foundation of the Virgin Islands tomorrow, and remain committed to empowering the future of these Virgin Islands, which lies in the abilities of you and our youth. Ladies and gentlemen, young people of the Virgin Islands, thank you for joining us today. The application process for the Emerging Fellow Award is now officially open. May God continue to bless us in these Virgin Islands. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. And we're going to now hear from um, one of our young people, Miss Lakeisha Mimiwana, one of our first recipients of the Emerging Fellow Award. Ms. Warner. Good morning to everyone. I fully acknowledge the protocol that has already been established. My name is Lakisha Warner. I am very, this is a very exciting moment for me to be a part of the official launching of the Emerging Fellows Program. Last year, I was one of the first recipients of the program where I got to attend the 2012 London Olympic Games. This was an experience I would treasure for the rest of my life. Meeting people like the sprinter Veronica Campbell and sprinter Michael Phillips were exciting moments for me. Just sitting in the stands and watching the games live was an experience I will never forget. 
It was overwhelming at times, but made me even more committed to realizing my dream of, beca of becoming an international athlete. For me personally, balancing track and school is not an easy task. Getting up 4.30 in the morning, most mornings, and training from 5 to 7, then after school in the same day is hard work and calls for real dedication. <clears throat> Remember, I'm just 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but like my parents and coaches always say, hard work always pays off. Where I want to be in the next 10 years? Well, I want to be known as a world-class athlete and an Olympic medalist. I'm working hard to my other career as a soldier. My dream is to one day be able to somehow help feed the hungry children of the world and make sustainable contribution to the Virgin Islands community. To the younger ones that look up to me, and as they always say, hard work always pays off, and the song that says, I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard at it, I'll be where I want to be. Don't ever give up. For athletes here today, and those not present, along with fellow young persons of the Virgin Islands, I see the Emerging Fellows Program as a great help by Minister Walwyn to further develop us for real competition in the world. For me, it will be, it will be opportunities such as the World Youth Championships, World Juniors, and even the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio, where I plan to be a competitor and not a spectator. Right, Nella? <laughs> we do need the help of our government so that our athletic dreams can become a reality where we can shine like the rest of the world. Honorable Myron Walwyn, I know you will see this program through to the end, and on behalf of all the young people across the Virgin Islands, we thank you for not just talking, but allowing your actions to show that you really are for empowering the future of the Virgin Islands. Minister Walwyn, on behalf of our young people, like myself, are ready to put the work to help make our people and our country great. So together, we will make our country great. And may God continue to bless our great, beautiful Virgin Islands. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Warner. Isn't it uh, great to hear young people stand up and speak like that? Uh, really makes me proud as a, as a teacher to hear them play like that. Okay, I want to, to conclude this morning's uh, um, press briefing by just uh, saying a little bit more, which I suppose will reiterate what uh, the Honorable Minister and uh, the Premier said in their remarks, that this program will provide our community with a structured avenue for young people to access public funding support. It is anticipated that this program, which is commencing with limited funding, will gain support and the funding available will be increased as the economic situation of the territory allows. We in the ministry also anticipate that the participation of successful applicants will inspire other young people to engage in preparatory activities necessary not only to gain knowledge and skills, but to develop the social and emotional intelligence necessary to successfully participate and navigate the challenges of participation in this global co economy. There are many opportunities available for internships, mentorships, and attachments for aspiring entrepreneurs and professionals in all fields. And we fully expect that this small start will flourish into a significant initiative that bring these within the reach of our young people. The minister spoke about the application process, but it's now open, the applications are available. We have copies here this morning, along with the criteria for being successful. And I'm sure as the minister introduced our committee members, um, they will be working very hard in in a few weeks' time, and I'm sure we will be seeing some fruit bearing from this uh, initiative. I want to take the opportunity to thank the Honorable Premier for taking time out of his busy schedule this morning to come and be with us and giving remarks. The Honorable Minister 
for his foresight in launching, in putting this uh, initiative forward and, and having us launch it today. And you will hear him say very often that he works us very hard in the ministry. And when he says he wants something done, we got to get going and get it done. Um, we are very proud of the initiative in the ministry. Ms. Lorna Stevens, uh, Mrs. Arlene Penn, Ms. Colleen Penn, Ms. Saskia Barnes for their hard work in organizing this morning's activity. Thanks to Ms. Charles and Ms. Penn for the lovely renditions of the national anthem and the territorial song. Members of the Emerging Fellow Awards Committee for agreeing to serve. The members of the media, without you here, this would not have been a success, so we thank the members of the media. Parents, teachers, students, athletes, all, we thank you for coming out this morning and joining the Ministry of Education and indeed the government of the Virgin Islands in this very proud moment. Thank you all very much.